Good afternoon. Welcome to our presentation of IRB Committee Minutes and Online Review Management. After the beginning of this session, at the beginning of this session, Joseph and I will demonstrate how to create a committee from scratch and how to create review comments and attachments through the online review function. After everything is set up ready, I will focus on the minutes of committee meetings, schedule, and meeting minutes, while Joseph focus on the various access and rights in online review for all different protocol personnel. We should have a Q&A time at the end of the presentation, but you are certainly welcome to ask questions during the presentation as well. Okay. Okay. So this uh, is the process that we will go through our presentation today. Okay. So first of all, I am going to log in as IRB administrator and set up this committee uh, from scratch. So let me log out first and come back in. as IRB administrator. And I will go to usually for IRB administrator, you usually go to central amend tab. And then uh, you will see committee option here. And the search icon is to search existing committee. The green one is to create committee. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm just going to put in my Kuali presentation for the description and also copy the same pre uh, description to the committee description and put in um, oops, put in quality IRB as the committee ID and also as the name. For the home unit, it really depends on the implement, implementing uh, institution. But in this case, we're just going to pick university as the lead unit. And for the minimum members for quorum, we're just going to put in three. Uh, maximum protocol, we'll say 10. And the events submission date that actually uh, relate to the deadline of the protocol submission uh, date. So that we're just going to pick like five. Okay. And this committee type is IRB committee. And we're going to do, you have a uh, different option right here, but we're just going to pick full board for this one. And also we need to um, select the area of research for this committee. So you can just click on the search icon. It will give you all the different um, area expertise for the committee. And we'll just, in this case, we're just going to pick, randomly pick something in return. So this first page for basic committee information is set up. Uh, we're just going to go to the member tab and to set up members. And today I'm going to put in four members for this committee. So I will do um, a search icon on my committee members. And I, know, I already know who I'm going to put in to here, so I'm just going to search by last name. So first person I'm going to search is Chu. Okay, and say add member. And then uh, I'm going to do, keep doing this. The second last name is Kate. So, Allison, yes. And then the third person that we would do is Woods, Della. The last person I'm going to search is Majors.
an app member. Okay. So you will see I already have four members, but for now they are all inactive. So you need to actually go into each one of them and set up some basic information to turn them into active member. So I am going to do this for Chu now. Um, the person detail, you have choice of uh, if Chu is a voting member or non-voting member. And then um, the starting date, we are just going to pick November 1st and go for one year. Okay. And then contact information, just a read-only um, sub-panel that which you um, the implementing institution will have to set up for you already. So I'm going to hide those first two subpanel and let me open up the role subpanel. This we wanted to add the role for this committee for Chu. So I'm just going to point him as uh, her as chair. And starting day is November 1st this year, uh, and for one year. And add this role in here. And also for expertise, we are going to pick some area randomly. <laughs> okay. So then this is the first person. Let me open up those sub panel. Okay. So you will see those are the basic information for Chu. And she is active right now. So let me hide her. And then I need to do this for three more times, so just bear with me, okay? Okay, for Allison, we're just um she's also a voting member starting at November first and go for one year. Okay, and she is going to be vice chair. for the same time. And for the expertise, we are also going to just randomly select something. Okay, so Allison is active now. So let's do this for Adela. Okay, also a voting member. Go for one year. The role will be uh, a member and also a scientist in the same period of time. Okay. And for the expertise, okay. Just going to pick one and return. Okay, so Della is active now. And the last person is Nick. Majors. Um, he's also going to be a voting member. Start and end at the same time. Okay, let me hide this one first. Oops. <laughs> and then um, let me open up the role. He will be a member but non scientist. Okay. And same thing for his expertise. Okay. So I think all four members is active now. And we're just going to go to the schedule tab. If there's something that I miss in the member, it should tell me and give me an error message. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so then now I'm in schedule tab. And this is where you wanted to set out how often you wanted to meet for this committee. So um, the date is going to start it from today. And the starting time, I'll just generally say um, 12 p.m. is fine. And then it will probably always be in this room. And there will be cho uh, option that later on you can uh, change your room assignment. And then it's going to be monthly meeting. So there do have some options that you can set up your recur recurrent um, meeting. So I just going to use the second option. I want it to meet every third, um, let's say Friday, and for every two months. It will end it for one year. 
and we'll just click at event and you will actually give you the schedule right here. And then you might look at the schedule and say, oh, I wanted to delete one of the meetings I don't think we're going to meet. Let's delete the July one because the school is going to be in summer. So I can just say, I wanted to delete this one and say yes. So July meeting will be uh, disappear from the schedule. And here you can change your deadline. This deadline is actually uh, according to how many days events for protocol submission that you set up in the member uh, in the committee tab. And um, you can change your room assignment here, your time here individually. And if you look at this and you say, oh, this is pretty much what I want, then you can just do blanket approve. Okay. So let me see here. Okay, so we're pretty much done with the committee. I'm going to close this committee and then hand it over to Joseph. Thank you, Evan. Mm -hmm. My name is Joseph Abraham. I'll be covering the online review management part of this presentation. My focus will be on reviewers entering comments and the IRB administrator managing those comments. One of the very first things I do is to create and submit a protocol. For that, I will be logging into the demo instance as the user IRB researcher. From the landing page, I click on Create Protocol. As you can see, the system opens up all the different sections of the protocol for me to fill. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to enter the few mandatory fields so that I can go ahead and submit this protocol. For my description, I'm going to call it My Quali Presentation. I'm going to use the same description as my title. I'm going to leave the protocol type as standard. For the principal investigator, I'm going to go with the PI with the last name of Byler. So I enter the last name Byler here, click on Search, and then select the return value. The system will populate the lead unit from Elba Byler's information. At this point, since I have filled out the mandatory fields in this protocol, I can go ahead and save. Mm -hmm. And what the system will do is generate a protocol number in the right-hand top corner of the screen. <clears throat> so this protocol number ends with 0133, and this is something I can note down since it will help me search for the protocol later on. I will now navigate to the protocol actions with the intent to submit this protocol to the IRB. From within protocol actions, I select request an action I open up Submit for Review. There are only two mandatory fields here that I need to fill out. One is Submission Type, for which there's only one selection called Initial Protocol Application for Approval. And there's Submission Review Type, for which I select a full committee approval. With those two data entries, I can go ahead and submit. The next thing to perform is the IRB Administrator assigning this protocol to a committee schedule and selecting reviewers for this protocol. For that, I log back into the system as an IRB administrator. The system provides a variety of ways for the IRB administrator to search for this protocol. And I'm going to try and show you a couple in this demo. I'll first go into the central admin tab, access protocol submissions, and then search for my protocol by date. Let's say I enter submission date from 11-10-2011 and I do a search. It returns all the protocols that were entered today. And from here, I select the protocol that I created for this demo. The system opens all the protocol sections for the IRB administrator to review. The two things I want to do right now is to assign this to a committee and schedule. For that, I go into the protocol actions tab, 
open up request and action, and then click on assign to committee and schedule. From here, I shall select the committee created by Waven a couple minutes ago, which was Quali IRB. And I will choose a schedule date of 11-18-2011. And I can submit. When I activate the submit action, the system will make some other actions available to the IRB administrator, one of which is assign reviewers. So I can see that in the committee where when created, there were four committee members, and I'm going to choose three of them as reviewers for this protocol. So I'm going to choose Ines Chu as a primary, Della Woods as a secondary, and then Majors as a secondary. I'm going to leave Allison Kate as an active committee member, and I can go ahead and submit. Once the reviewers are assigned to a protocol, the next step is for the reviewers to access their online review and you know, put in review comments and review attachments. For that, I'll be logging into the system as the different reviewers and entering comments and attachments. So I log out of the system and log back in again as the first reviewer, Chu. The system brings Chu to the landing page, and from here there's a dedicated link for Chu called All My Reviews. So All My Reviews should show all the protocols that are there for Chu to review. Here I can enter some search parameters or just click on Search. So this shows me there are two protocols, and I'm going to open up the first one, which is 0133, which is the test protocol we just created. Just like for the IRB admin and the researcher, the system also lets the reviewer see all the different sections of the protocol. But by default, it logs the reviewer to the online review panel. I'll give you a quick explanation of the layout of this panel. The top panel here, online review, has some basic information about Chu and allows Chu to also make a recommendation of what needs to be done with this protocol. There's a, there's a panel for review comments and then there's a panel for review attachments. So I'm going to enter a couple comments as Chu. I'm going to call my first comment a private comment by Chu. Each time you enter a comment, the system requires you to click on the Add Action, which commits the comment to the protocol. I'm going to enter another comment and call it a public comment by Chu. I click on Add Action again. The system also lets implementing schools to maintain a table or a repository of their standard comments. So if I click on this lookup, it will show me all the comments maintained by an implementing school. So I click on search. It shows me all the standard review comments. So I can, any, I can choose any one that's appropriate. And the system will automatically populate that comment in the comment box here. So I click on add to commit this comment to the protocol. The system also allows you to add review attachments for reviewers. So I'm going to call my attachment a review attachment by Chu. I browse for the file in my system. I believe I have one called Chu's review attachment. I select it, and I click on Add to commit the action to the protocol. As Chu, I can also make a recommendation of what needs to be done with this protocol. So I'm going to go and say, approve this protocol. And if at this point I'm satisfied with my comments, my attachments, I can click on approve review. And what this will do is take out this online review assignment from the reviewer's hands and give it to the IRB admin. I'm next going to log in as the reviewer Woods and essentially do the same thing, which is add a comment, add an attachment, and approve the review. So I log into this landing page. I click on all my reviews. 
I do a search, see all the protocols that are there for Woods to review, and then click on Edit here. As Woods, I'm going to add one review comment and one review attachment. I click on Add. And I also add an attachment, and I'll call it a review attachment by Woods. Click on Browse. and activate the add action here. As Woods, I'm also going to make a recommendation that this protocol be approved. So I click on this determination recommendation, select approve, and then since I'm final with my comments and attachments and my recommendation, I'm going to click on approve review. For the third reviewer who was assigned to this protocol, Nicholas Majors, I'm going to play out the scenario that Nicholas Majors couldn't enter the comments and attachments, and he communicated the comments and, the, and sent the attachment to the IRB administrator offline. So we'll have the IRB administrator enter comments and attachments on behalf of Nicholas Majors. So I'm going to log out of this system and log back in again as the IRB administrator. I go into the Central Admin tab, click on Protocol Submissions, and I can directly search with the protocol number since I noted it down. I open up this protocol, and I go to the Online Review tab. The Online Review tab for the IRB admin is structured slightly differently than that for the reviewer. While the reviewer can see only their comments and their attachments in their online review, the IRB admin gets to see all of them for all the reviewers. So if I hide the OLRs or the online reviews for these three reviewers, you can see that I have online review for two majors and boards. So let's say I want to process the online review comments made by two first. By default, you'll notice that the system marked all the comments as private. The reviewer never made that selection. So one of the capabilities the IRB admin has is to have you know, more control over what comments the PI should see or not see. So for this first comment, if I as an IRB admin decide this needs to be private because protocol personnel should not see it, I'm going to keep this box checked as it is. For the other two comments, I can make the decision that I want protocol personnel to see this. These are public comments, so I just uncheck these boxes. For the review attachment by Chu, the IRB admin can view it, they can delete it, or they can even make this something that protocol personnel can view. So I'm going to check this box, which means that the protocol personnel or the researcher will be able to see the review attachment added by Chu. I also see the recommendation made by Chu. And at this point, if I am finalized with Chu's comments and attachments, I'm going to accept the review comments. So once I'm done with choose comments, I can go ahead and hide it and open up Della Woods comments. So then I'll be admin. If I decide that Della Woods comments require some revisions, I can choose to activate the return to reviewer which will essentially send back this online review back to Della Woods to redo her comments. So I'm going to enter some explanation here saying, please provide more description. And click on Yes. And this will embed the reason I just entered into a notification and send it to Della Woods so she knows that she has to redo her online review. So for the third reviewer, Nicholas Majors, who communicated 
the review attachment and comments offline with the IRB administrator. As an IRB admin, I'm going to enter comments on behalf of majors, so I'm just going to say a review comment on behalf of majors. I make it final. I click on Add. I'll also enter an attachment. I'll say on behalf of majors, I select the file Nicholas Majors would have given me, and I click on Add. I'm also going to check the protocol personnel can view, and then click on Add. The system will require these comments to be approved first by the reviewer before it can be accepted by the IRB administrator. So I first clicked on Approve Review, and then next the system will prompt me to accept these review comments. So I'm going to accept the review comments as an IRB administrator. For the comments that were returned back to Della Woods, I'm now going to log back in as Della Woods and then redo my review comments. So I go back into the system, log back in as Woods, go to all my reviews, do a search, open up the protocol, and as Zella Woods, I can see the previous comments, attachments, and recommendation I've made, and I can also say that you know this is additional information. So I'm going to say additional information by Della Woods, and click on Add. If I'm done processing and revising my comments as Della Woods, I can go ahead and approve this review. So I'm going to approve the review, which is going to take it back from Della Woods and give it back to the IRB administrator. So the last step in this process is as an IRB administrator to accept Woods revised comments. So I'm going to log back into the system as an IRB administrator, go to Central Admin, click on Protocol Submissions, do a search on this protocol, and then navigate to Online Review. So since I'm done processing Chu and Major's comments, I don't need to look at them anymore. So I can hide choose comments, and I can hide major's comments, and just focus on Della Woods revised comments. So I look at Della Woods comments, and I think that these two comments can be made public. So I uncheck these private flags, and then I look at the review attachment, and I if I decide as an IRB administrator that this review attachment should not be exposed to the protocol personnel, I can leave this box unchecked. So having processed Della Woods comments and attachments, I can click on Accept Review Comments. So outside of online review, the system lets the IRB administrator also manage all the comments and attachments from within protocol actions. So I'm navigating to protocol actions. and then opening Request and Action. And there are two panels here called Manage Review Comments and Manage Review Attachments. So I first open Manage Review Comments. As you can see, it neatly summarizes all the comments made for this protocol with the private final settings. It shows you who updated it last, who created it. In some places, you know, 
the reviewer created it. In some places, it was the IRB administrator acting on behalf of majors. You can still delete or even sort comments here if you want them to appear in a particular way. The IRB admin can also enter comments here as an IRB admin. So I'm just going to say comment entered by IRB admin. I want to make this final so protocol personnel can see it and public. So I'm leaving this box unchecked and I click on add. Which will essentially add this pro add this comment to the protocol. And to complete the action, I'm going to click on submit. The system does the same thing with manage review attachments. It gives the IRB administrator a summarized view of all the attachments, all the review attachments added to this protocol. So if I click on show, it shows me there was an attachment by Woods, attachment on behalf of majors, and then attachment by Chu. Two of these attachments have the checkbox checked for protocol personnel can view, and one of them is unchecked. If I'm okay with the way this is, I don't need to take any action. The very last thing I want to do at this point is to assign this protocol to an agenda. So I click open assign to agenda. It shows me the committee name, the scheduled date, the location, the time. I can add comments, but I'm not going to at this point. I can just go ahead and submit, which will assign this protocol to that meeting's agenda. At this point, I'm going to hand it back over to Waven. Thank you, Joseph. So um, let's pretend that we're like a couple of days before the meeting actually going to meet. So for IRB administrator, you wanted to go in and make sure your meeting um, schedule, everything set up is correct. So uh, I'm still logging as IRB admin. I'm just going to go and use the, the uh, lookup icon and search for my committee. And I wanted to click on View Active and make sure I go to the right schedule, which is November 18. And I can click on the Maintain button for this particular meeting. And I will just go over the meeting place uh, if the time looks okay, of course, PM. And then um, make sure everything is correct. And then I'm going to mark the schedule available for all my reviewers. And also, you can have um, those sub panels that you can go over with the, uh, the scheduled meeting. You can see what protocol is submitted to this particular schedule. And uh, you can also put in other action. Let me hide this two first. Uh, for this other action, you do have some choice. If you wanted to put in extra information that you wanted to talk about in this meeting. So um, for example, we're just going to put a other business that we're going to talk about member vacation. OK, and we'll just add it. So it will put in agenda for us. And then um, after you think that it looks OK to you, then you can go to um, Save first. And that's, oh, something is wrong. <laughs> oh, the end time should be on. OK, because we changed this time to 12 PM. So let's change this one to, um, OK, we're probably going to meet until 4 o'clock that afternoon. Okay, so let's do a save again. Okay, everything is fine, so let's go to the meeting action. And we're going to um, generate agenda this time. And after you click Submit, it will have the first, because we, this is the first time we generate agenda, so it's the uh, version 1. And you can view this as a PDF format. Okay. Show the download. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Uh, let me close this window. Sorry about this. And we're just going to open up this PDF format. Okay. So this is the agenda. It will show where we're going to meet and what time. And then um, all the agenda that we're going to talk about right now, there's only one protocol that we're going to talk about. Okay. Okay, so then um, that's the IRB administrator will do before the meeting. And then for the reviewer, because we mark this particular meeting available to the reviewer. So I'm going to log in as one of the reviewer. I'm going to log in as two. For reviewer, we do have this um, special function that all my schedule. And the reviewer can come in here and see all the meeting that's uh, assigned to them. And then in this meeting, you will in this schedule, you will see the um, coming up meeting list on the top of the list, and all the past meeting is at the bottom of the list. And then it's actually um, you will see the most recent one at the on top, and then um, going to the future. And for the past one, also the most recent past one will be on top of the past section and then uh, going to the the <laughs> even all uh, time. Okay. And then this is what you will see. So um, if I'm Chu, I will just pick up uh, pick on this meeting and do a view on this. Okay. So when I come into here it's actually going to the committee. And I, for a reviewer, I probably wanted to go to protocol submitted, in which only has one protocol listed. So I will click on the view button. This will actually take me to the protocol um, part of the, the detail. So I will have all the tabs available to me if I wanted to see the detailed information of this protocol. And or if I wanted to just see um, the summary and history panel. And for the submission detail, if I open it up, I will see the summary of review comments and review attachment, which I will open. And I will see all those review comments and attachment, which are the administrator final. And I can see this before I go to the meeting. Okay, so I'm just going to close this window. And you might be wondering for Kate, who is an active committee member but not assigned to this protocol, what would she see if she going to this uh, committee schedule? So I am going to log out as Chu and log back in as Kate. So remember, Kate is active member but not assigned to this protocol. And I will also use all my schedules. Okay, and I can only see this one schedule because it's made available to uh, the, all the members. So I will click on View, and I will go to the protocol submitted. I see the same protocol and click on the View button. So even though I'm not assigned, but because I'm active, so I see all the detailed tab of this protocol. And if I go to the same place as Chu did earlier, I will see review comments and review attachment. Same thing here. Okay. And let me get out of this. And I'm going to walk out of Kate. And walk back in as IRB administrator. 
and let's pretend that we already have our meeting, and then uh, IRB administrator just decide to um, go back to the office and record all the meeting detail. So I may, I am going to um, go into the committee. Okay, view active. Go to the schedule and pick up the meeting that we just have, November 18. Okay, so at this time I wanted to record the detail of the meeting that we already have. So, okay, uh, we actually did a meet because 2155, um, the air condition doesn't work, so we're, we're changing to um, 2145 for example, and we actually meet at 12, um, but we only meet for um, two hours. And I can mark this status as committee has met. Okay, and the meeting date actually is um, 16. Okay, and then um, I'll say, okay, the meeting detail looks fine to me, and then um, Okay, I, I know that we talked about other action here. So uh, I'm just going to go, um, okay, we will record the other action into the minutes. Okay, so let's do that now. So I will pick other business. And because we already have this member vacation enter earlier, so it will be one of the choice there. And we will say Chu will be out uh, from December 20th to um, January 15th. How about that? Okay. And we'll mark it as final. And we'll add this um, comment into the minutes. Okay. So you will see the other business right here. And then uh, let's also record attendance. So we have this four member, and we know uh, Della and Chu, and also Major. They're all present and voted. Okay. So if they wanted, to, uh, I wanted to put some comments. I will put it right here at this time, but I'm not going to. So after we do this, let's save it first for the attendance record. Okay, let me hide this panel, hide this panel, and then for the meeting minutes sub panel, we wanted to also do the attendance. We want to generate attendance. It will put in those three members who present and voted automatically for you. So it's the final, and then we add this as one of the minutes. Okay. So at this time, we're kind of have all the meeting minutes ready. But before we generate the minutes, let's go to the protocol submitted sub panel. Find the protocol. We're going to record the committee decision and approve the protocol through this committee uh, function. So then for IRB administrator, you don't have to get out of committee and find the protocol and do all those actions. You can do it from one place. So we're just going to do record committee decision right here. I'm going to say it's approved, and there's say three votes on it, and that's submit. After you do this record committee decision, some of the available action will change. Before you didn't see approved action, but now you do. So you can say, yeah, simply approved on that day. Okay. So we're just going to close this protocol window and let's go back to the committee. And now everything is ready, and we can go to meeting action and do generate minutes. Okay. So you can have this <laughs> open, and then um, so you can see this meeting minutes right here. So you have the meeting date and time in places, which is the room that we changed. 
and then who present and voted and who did not. And that's the other business that we're talking about and that's the detail of other business. And then all the protocol um, there were all the review about this protocol and also um, the vote count is also recorded in the minutes and it is approved. Okay. So that's about it for the committee um, function at this time. So I'm going to hand over to Joseph. Thank you, Evan. So now that the protocol has been approved, the IRP researcher can actually come in and look at the review comments and the attachments. So I'm going to log back into the system as an IRP researcher. And from the landing page, I'm going to click on Search Protocols. I know the number for the protocol for this test demo. I enter it. I click on Search. I can open up Just the So I go into Protocol Actions as an IRB researcher. And then from within Protocol Actions, I go into Summary and History and open up Submission Details. So the two panels here for review comments and review attachments lets a researcher see the comments and attachments that, that were marked such that protocol personnel could view them. So all these attachments have a private, fine, private flag setting of no, which means these are all public comments. And then I click on review attachments to see that I can see only two attachments, and both of these had the protocol personnel can view set to yes. If you compare this with what um, Waven had shown earlier from the reviewer's point of view, the reviewer could see also the, the comments and attachments that were, that were marked private. And that has been restricted from the visibility of the researcher. So that concludes our presentation. And at this point, we can take some questions. Thank you. Thank you. Raven, can you stop the recording? Thank you. Please stand by.